and welcome to Airflow Summit 2021. I'm going to talk about contributing to Apache Airflow and my journey of becoming Airflow's leading contributor. But before that, a bit about myself. Um, I'm an Airflow committer and a PMC member, like Jarek mentioned. I work at Astronomer as the manager of the Airflow engineering team. I, I work full time on the open source Airflow, um, like contributing code, creating new releases, and reviewing and merging PRs. Uh, before Astronomer, I was working at a company called Data Reply, which was a data consultancy company. I'll get to that point in a, in, in a moment. Um, and this is the rough agenda for today's talk. So. I'm going to talk about my journey first and how I started contributing, how you can start contributing to Airflow, uh, various communication channels of the Airflow community, and then the guidelines of how to become a committer. Uh, you'll also see a lot of GIFs in my slides because, well, who does not like GIFs? So let's get started. Um, so I completed my master's in data science and analytics from Rolf Holloway in the UK and was doing a full-time job at Data Reply as a big data consultant. Uh, and we were working on a client project to migrate on-prem data to GCP. Uh, everyone was moving to cloud uh, in end of 2017, and we were doing the same. And we were looking for an orchestrator to do that job for us. Uh, we found Airflow, and it fit really well for our use case. Uh, so I started working on Airflow. Um, now, one of the tasks was the data would arrive in the GCS bucket, right? A classic ETL, data would arrive to a GCS bucket from the on-prem and we'll call it the landing area. Then the data would be copied to another GCS bucket, which is a staging area. Uh, this is so that the data that has arrived is untouched. Um, but for copying the files from GCS bucket to another GCS bucket, surprisingly, there were no airflow operators back then. This was, yeah, end of, end of 2017. So what does a developer do when they're stuck? Like everyone else, I asked that question on Stack Overflow. I did some Googling, but I, I didn't find anything. So I asked it on Stack Overflow. Uh, this was my question in back then. Uh, like I wanted to copy the files from one bucket to another, but I can't find any operator for it. Uh, in the meantime, I, I started checking Airflow source code. Uh, I didn't have much experience with Python to navigate the source code that much. I just had six months or a year of Python experience at that point. So I was pretty new to the ecosystem. But when I started looking into the source code, guess what I found? Uh, I found that someone already contributed that literally two hours ago, like literally two hours back. And I was like, wow, this is exciting. Let me, let me try and use this um, operator they contributed. And I, I I answered my own question. I was like, well, I asked it. Now I need to answer it. I found it. I was so happy. <laughs> um, then I tried using that operator in in like our dev instance. And what? Guess what happened? It didn't work. <laughs> uh, and I was like, well. All, all, all this happiness goes down the drain. <laughs> but then I, I started looking at the stack trace of there and I, I found that uh, find, I found the bug. It, it was a small typo, uh, like, like always. Uh, I, I fixed it and I ran it and it worked. And I was, I was happy again. And I thought, if I face this error, that would be others like me who, who will face this issue too, right? So let me try and contribute this fix. So I, I go ahead and I, I create my first PR to Airflow. Uh, and for that matter, any open source project. I hadn't contributed uh, to any open source project before this PR. This was my first ever PR. Uh, and at this point, I'm also thinking a lot of different things, right? That is this a correct fix as it is like uh, so small? I'll, I'll show the actual change as well in a second. Like, But I was thinking a lot of things while creating this PR. Uh, what things do I need to take care of before and after creating the PR? If I do something silly, will people make fun of me or think I'm stupid? Because everything that you do in open source is public and will be there forever. Um, thankfully, the documentation was clear and helpful as well. So I just waited for reviews on my PR once I created this. And now I'll show the actual fix as well. Like this was the fix. Uh, this small little fix, it, it was just a typo. Instead of like GCS, uh, Google Cloud Storage Operator to a Google Cloud Storage Operator, it was just Google Cloud Storage to Google Cloud Storage Operator. I know it's a big name. <laughs> um, and thankfully, with Python 3, you do not need to add anything in super. It's taken care of. Uh, but yeah, back then, 
this was the fix for for my issue and i i was happy that it worked um well i was waiting for reviews and i re i uh, got a review from bolke who is now the vp of airflow and he said i i didn't follow the guidelines i was like oh man no what have i done what have i not followed uh, while the documentation clear i i missed something and he he, he was he correctly pointed out the specifics of it and i said like i tried man should i should i go and contribute more or at least try and improve on it and i said well i think i read it and i even uh, updated the commit and the pr messages and then i found that back then the convention was that you will add the jira id in the front of a commit message as well as the pr description a pr title uh, and i said okay yeah well now i that uh, now that i know i'll create a separate pr uh, with all these fixes the second problem with this um, with my first pr was the commit message the only thing i wrote over there as you can see is that fix the super class for the operator now all these commit messages and the pr titles go to change log so if you think from that point of view if you did this right now fix the super class for the operator what do you understand like which operator what was the fix what should i care about so he he was correct in pointing me out and i created another pr like i said um with an actual <laughs> with uh, this time following the guidelines uh, the correct commit message correct pr description and all those things and i was so happy <laughs> i was so happy that uh, my first pr got merged and i was like am i a committer now am i am i a committer to airflow am i an expert in airflow and what not but i was so happy that that, that yeah at this first pr got merged and then i slowly and steadily started working on uh, different issues uh, i was working on that client project uh, and we faced some few more issues a uh, few more feature requests and i started creating um, more prs now that i i knew the process okay that these are the things that i need to take care of uh, i started looking at the code base a, a bit and i was all this time i was just working around gcp and its operators and its hooks so i was a bit familiar with how how the code looked like uh, so i also started reviewing stuff and and this and as you can see from this image i slowly and steadily just the contributions grew from few 30 contributions to 700 odd contributions the next year uh, and then in about like 6 months uh, from my first pr i got invited to become a committer and pmc members uh, pmc member of the project uh, because of my contributions and i was all, i also started organizing airflow meetup groups and and what not um, but this was surely a um, um, milestone for uh, for my career that i became a committer and pmc member i'll also explain what does it mean to be a committer and pmc member at the end of the talk um, and another seven months down the line and i volunteered to be a release manager and released airflow 1.10.2 uh, since then i have released a majority of new airflow versions like 1.10.3 5 7 8 i don't know uh, uh, many um, but this was the first time i released a uh, airflow version like voting to the voting process there is a voting process that goes on once the vote passes then you and then you release the actual uh, python wheels and source code and what not uh and something happened this year earlier this year i became the leading airflow contributor uh, and i just overtook um maxim who is creator of airflow uh and like this this happened just this year but i want to stress at this point that while the number of commits is good but it's not everything uh, you the thing you should more care about is what features you are adding what content you add uh, sometimes people remember you by the feature names like scheduler h uh, people will know okay you added that awesome we want your help about that so number of commits are not everything um, but it was at least it was it was still a good milestone um, and what did i learn by by these contributions i learned so much i would say as i said in 2017 i was very inexperienced with python i just started my journey uh, so i i i didn't 
ever write a unit test before that. Uh, I was not familiar with the Python testing framework and my coding skills were okay, like, like every other uh, person who starts coding, right? And I, I wrote a lot of unit tests. I was looking at PRs or commits from other experienced developers. And I learned a lot from that, uh, more, more than what I learned from my actual job. I started writing unit tests, better unit tests, improved my coding skills, got to know a lot of different companies and dev across the globe. Um, I was even uh, talking at Airflow Summit uh, last year. Before that, I was organizing the Airflow meetup groups and everything. My communication skills improved a lot. I was so, so fearful of speaking in public. That I, I, I still remember the first talk I gave. I was very, very fearful. Uh, but thankfully, because of talking about Airflow at many different places, the fear no longer exists. And like, the, there are other communication skills, like you commit messages, PR descriptions, email threads on dev lists and, and, and whatnot. And with the project as big as Airflow, there's a huge community behind it. Uh, Airflow is so popular. You can see it from the numbers of Airf Airflow Summit registrations itself. We are, we are hoping that will touch um, more than 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, who knows? Um, but because of that, you talk to multiple developers, even across the globe, like I'm talking to someone in Brazil, we are talking about how they are using Airflow and it, it creates a relation between the company and us and even the developers from various backgrounds. So I learned a lot. Um, there was also a personal milestone um, that I received because of my contributions to Airflow, which is like I got UK's tier one exceptional talent visa, which means I was allowed to stay in the UK without, even if I change my employers, I don't need to apply for a different visa, which was because of what all things I did with Airflow and the extended data engineering um, community. So if it, next time you think about why you should contribute, there are a lot of good reasons uh, you should contribute. So enough about my journey. Um, and I hope it inspired you that uh, you'll also start contributing. And which is what I'm going to explain next. Like most people have this question is I want to contribute, but where and how to start? I don't know that. So hopefully I can explain, explain that in the next uh, few slides. So we have covered how you can start contributing in great detail in the contributing.rst. Everything you will ever need is in already in the contributing.rst. But as it is comprehensive, like as it contains everything, um, it, it can be a bit intimidating. Um, we also got a contributing quick start guide, which like summarizes how to set up a local dev environment, which is what you need. Um, so it's a condensed version of contributing.rst. And then you have like the good first issues. Uh, GitHub provides this good um, endpoint, contribute. It's not just for Airflow, it's for every uh, GitHub repo. You can add contribute uh, endpoint, uh, just go through that URL and it will show you the good first, if, the, if there are labels with good first issues, no, if there are issues with good first issue label, then it will show you over there and it will also show you the link to the contributing guidelines for that particular repo. And next, so, Good for, and yeah, to explain about the good first issues, like those are the issues that won't take a whole lot of time um, to contribute. And it's a good starting point to understand the dev process, a good point to get into the ecosystem, um, which is what uh, the GCP, GCS, uh, the Google Cloud Storage Commit was for me. Uh, you just want that first or second PR by which you will know the development process and by which then you can start exploring more things. But that first commit or that first PR is important. And this is how a typical contribution workflow looks like. Like find the issue you want to work on, set up a local dev environment. Like those two are probably one of the, or are probably very common questions that, uh, okay, I, I know what to work on, but how do I start um, with building local dev environment since Airflow is a complex project and there are a lot of dependencies, a lot of moving parts. 
Um, so set up a local dev environment, understanding the code base, not entire code base. I'll also get to that. Um, but that write code and adding test, uh, writing documentation, running tests locally, create PRs and waiting for reviews, addressing any suggestions by the reviewers. And if your PR stays there for a while without being reviewed, nudging um, committers and reviewers politely. So let's go to each point one by one. So the first one, finding issues to work on. Start small. Like this is the tip I give it to everyone. Um, your first issue, just take it as an entry point, like I said. Do, you do not need to directly take, pick a huge issue you want to work on. If you don't get to the end of it, you'll get demotivated and you might never come back. Again, this is all my personal opinion. Uh, they are not set in stone, so uh, don't take me for it. But um, I will definitely recommend starting small. Um, the aim should be to understand the process rather than getting your PR merge. Like understand how the process works. And if you are already working on Airflow, like I was working on with Google Cloud Storage, then it's good. Then you know that, OK, you, you are facing certain bugs. And if you have any feature requests, then you can work on it. But then the, if you are not working on those protocols, if you don't have any issues or feature requests in mind, and then you want to literally find that issue that you want to work on. Also, for new joiners or for people start just starting with Airflow and just looking at the Airflow documentation, one of the good things is not, first of all, everything is not perfect. Our Airflow documentation is also not perfect. So start reading into the documentation. And if you find that something is missing or outdated or just too complex as well, like if you're trying to understand it and you say, oh, well, this process seems overly complicated. Uh, can, can it be a bit more simpler or can someone rephrase this? And if you have the idea on how to rephrase it, make that as your first PR, right? Even if there's a missing information or there might be cases where some of the information might be outdated. So those things you can update, you can help. This is a community project for the community, by the community. So feel free to create PRs with uh, documentation only um, changes as well. Even typos, formatting issues, broken links. Uh, and also to stress the important thing about typos is consider this as a starting point to more contributions. So while you, you should start with it, but you should not just add PRs for the sake of getting the numbers high. Just make sure you you that is clear. Um, I already mentioned the good first issues, but if you are already comfortable with the code base and you know what you are doing, then you can also look into bigger issues. Uh, if you click that link uh, whenever uh, whenever the slide is sent, or if you can do it now as well, um, just directly go to uh, Apache Airflow repo and click on issues, then you will see that there are 600, 700 issues. And if the issues are unassigned, feel free to take uh, take one on. Um, like this is what I was basically explaining that if there are open unassigned issues, if the issue is open and unassigned. Comment you want to work on it. A committer like me, Jarek, and there are other 28, 40 committers, actually. A uh, committer will assign that issue to you. Then it is all yours. Then it is all yours to work on. This is also a good point where you can ask for any help. Like if you're not sure uh, what you need to do next, or even if you have created a PR, but you don't know certain aspects, or you would love suggestions from someone, this is also a good place. Just tag the committer reviewer, or even if someone you know saying, do you think I can take another approach? Or do you think this is a starting point? Or whatever whatever you have in mind. Be open. Everyone is just there to help each other. So no question is silly. Like I have realized later as well, no question is silly. Um, ask however you like. And then. Improving documentation, again, the same the same thing, that documentation PRs are generally great first contributions. Um, and documentation is not just the Airflow, the documentation on the Airflow website. There are also uh, contributing guides. So at the, the previous slides, uh, this one, yeah. If you go to contributing.rst or contributor script guide, and if you find something is missing, something is incorrect and everything, you could create PRs to improve that as well. 
So that is also a part of documentation. And the good thing with documentation PRs are you don't need to write unit tests. So at least you can take baby steps. You don't need to run. You can just take baby steps and you understand the PR creation process. You understand the, how the community work. Um, and then you could start working on um, more code related uh, PRs. And I, I have linked some of the examples over here, which you can take a look when we send the slide across. Uh, those are sm all small PRs, just fixing uh, broken links or typos and stuff like that. So those PRs are also very welcomed. Second thing after you found the issue is like setting up setting up a local dev environment. Uh, it's a natural next step, right? So Airflow, first of all, want to reiterate that Airflow is a complex project with a lot of dependencies. We support a lot of different versions, different Python versions, different uh, meta database. So it's a bit tricky if you try it on your own, like if you just try with, uh, with normal pip install and if you directly start working on it without containers, it might get tricky with, okay, this dependencies does not work with this and it conflicts with other dependencies and whatnot. So I'll try to summarize this like, First, if you are very new to the project, fork the Apache Airflow repo. If you haven't, clone it locally on your local machine. Install pre-commit hooks. So Airflow uses some static code checks. Pre-commit hook is one of them. Pre-commit hook, uh, pre-commits are a framework, which by the way, I would recommend to you, for you to use it on any, on, any, on any of your personal repo as well. Like what that does it before you do git commit, it will run a bunch of checks. Whatever hooks you add, it will run those hooks during that time. I will also explain that in more detail at the end slides. Um, but if you if you don't want to deal with like formatting issues, you could just add a pre-commit hook with black in it. Um, black is another Python's opinionated formatter. Um, and you could just run with that. And you don't need to worry about uh, formatting related issues. It will automatically fix it. and it's very simple to install. Like once you fork your repo and clone it locally, the only thing you need to do is pip install pre-commit that installs the pre-commit CLI. And then you just do pre-commit install and that will install all the hooks. Airflow contains more than 85, 90 hooks. Um, so it will install all of them. Some of them are local that are run via bash scripts or Python scripts, while some of them are using external tools like black. And apart from the static code checks, the main development environment is Breeze. We use, thanks to Jarek that he started and uh, completed the whole development lifecycle for Breeze. It's a wrapper around Docker Compose for Airflow development. Um, and you could reproduce your unit tests and everything locally. We use Breeze in the CI as well. Uh, so it's a it's a great tool to run um, unit tests locally. So you could reproduce the issues that you are seeing on the CI. Um, for Mac users specifically, I have specifically listed this point, which is increased resources available to Docker for Mac, is because I have seen many users complain about it, um, and mainly because it might be hidden in one line in the documentation. So. Increase your resources before you run, otherwise your containers won't start or fail for with memory error and whatnot. Um, and there are other prerequisites you could check on this link. And the good thing, the other good thing is there's also also autocomplete. So you could just run please or set up autocomplete from your um, root from the root of your repo. If you run this, you can then just do breeze and whatever. You could just press tab and it will show you uh, the commands and options that are available to you. Uh, yeah, Airflow CI uses Breeze, so allows re reproducing locally. Uh, Airflow uses different environments. We, sub we officially support Python 3.6, 7.3.7, 7, and 3.8, and we have now started, started supporting 3.9 in the main version yet, not in a released version, just in the main branch. Um, but pre with Breeze, you could test it locally. You could just do Breeze, Python 3.9. Um, we could select your backends with the backend flag. We have Postgres, MySQL, we have MS SQL now and SQLite. Uh, and you could select versions for that as well. 
all of this is templated. So if you change the Postgres version from 12 to 9 or 10, it will pull that container image. Uh, you can also run a local instance of Airflow. Like if you run breeze Python 3.6 backend Postgres and that, that command, um, it will create the containers and exec you into one of the containers for you to run PyTest commands or any other commands. But if you want to just uh, add your DAGs and just run uh, with the main branch, you could just run the command that is below, which is breeze start airflow. Um, again, same, all the options are available, Python, uh, backend, the backend versions and all not, and whatnot. This, uh, running with this start airflow command, it will create a Tmux environment for you, um, similar to this, which air, it runs airflow web server in one of the windows, scheduler in one, the other one, and compiles the, JavaScript, Airflow, Airflow's web server requires JavaScript, uh, uses a lot of JavaScript libraries. So it compiles those, that is just one time. Uh, it's not needed uh, after, after you do it once. And uh, the top left one is mainly for you to run any uh, arbitrary commands. You could use Airflow CLI. Uh, you could just run tests over that. It's, it's completely up to you at that point. And the, you have found the issue, firstly. Now you have set up all your local development environment. Now is the point, now you actually start looking into the code. Use the editor of your choice, PyCharm, uh, VS Code, Vim, whatever you'd like. But you need to understand um, that many people get confused with it and it is also a big differentiator from Airflow 110X from Airflow 2 and above and the main branch. Airflow, Airflow's repo contains a lot of things. It's just not the code for a, the a core Apache Airflow. It is the Apache Airflow core, of course, but then there are 60 odd providers. So previously all the hooks and operators there that were in Airflow slash contrib were moved to their own pro, uh, folders called Airflow providers, Google, and so on. Same for Amazon and same for Postgres and same for all the other 60 providers. But all the point is that all of these are just inside the same repo, GitHub slash Apache slash Airflow. Um, even the official container image, even the official Helm chart, all the code lives inside the same repo. Each of these items are released and versioned and voted and everything is separately that's done separately, but that's mostly on the release manager or more on the PMC side of things. For a user, they just need to open PRs against the master, uh, the main branch, and and the same process applies for anything, um, for contributing anything. So this is also one of the tips that I give to anyone, uh, including uh, that's what I followed as well. Do not try to understand the entire code base at once. I have seen many people try that and get frustrated with it. Airflow has a comparatively larger code base. So do not try to understand, okay, how does the scheduler work right now? How does the web server work right now? Do not try to do everything at once. Start somewhere, start small. Like I said, again, I'll, come, I'll reiterate this more and more. Start small, um, get, get familiar with the directory structure. Make sure you know where the code lives. If you want to look up to, even if you want to look for scheduler code, you should know where to look at. Um, same for web server and whatnot. Uh, dive into source code related to issue. So uh, we have already found the issue that you want to work on. Local development environment is set. So. If you are working on GCS, you should know that it is under Airflow providers, Google, and you should start looking into that area, but start looking into source code for that issue. And the reason why I said uh, like start small is the same analogy. Like if you are moving to a new house, you try to get familiar with your immediate neighbors first and then the others, unless you have like memory of Sheldon Cooper. This is a big bang theory reference. For those of you who don't know, he has eidetic memory or photographic memory. He remembers people. I can't. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll advise that start small, um, understand it, be an expert in just even a one file that is good, then two files, then the section, and then expand it to different areas. 
Speaking of areas, so it's important that you know what are the different areas that the code base has. Uh, like we already know that we release this four, four or five components separately, but you should know even for the code airflow, what are the different components? Um, where are where are the files for it? So I'm not going to go through each one of them. I have like two slides on them. Um, this is for reference, but the main idea is that understand this, that there's a web server and the code for it, for example, lives in Airflow www. The scheduler code lives in Airflow job scheduler job and the Helm chart code lives in the chart directory at the root. All of these um, parts are uh, related to the root of the directory and CLI, web server, core Airflow talks. Uh, these are, this is the other question that I get asked a lot that you said we should start small. We want to contribute um, via some documentation. I kn I have seen from the website where it is, but I don't know where the code for it lives. So code for any documentation lives in docs slash Apache Airflow. This is from the root. And this is personally, I have categorized all these areas um, into different categories, which is like easy, medium, and more complex. So if you are just starting, start with docs, which is in, which is already in like docs of Apache Airflow, CLI, reference, reference that slide here, like CLI is in Airflow, CLI. So start checking that code first. What, what happens when you run Airflow web server? What happens when you run Airflow scheduler? So that code is inside CLI. Um, Operators, hooks, sensors inside all providers and stable API. These, according to me, are comparatively a lot easier than the other other parts. If you if you are if you already have a few commits in looking for looking for more code, I would suggest you to start contributing to CLI first. You do not need to find issues where there are no issues, but at least start checking them out, start understanding those. And if you find anything, then you could contribute. And providers is always a good thing. It's it's integration. As soon as there are many tools and it has an API, you could create a provider for it. So operators, hooks, sensors, all, all of this, um, you could contribute. You could also contribute uh, existing uh, operators to an existing provider, like I did, um, and, and stable API. Similarly, like web server, Helm chart, Docker file, database migrations, and all of them are moderately difficult. And the meat, the core of Airflow is the scheduler um, and the executor. And those are, for me, the complex part. It took me a good amount of time to understand the scheduler. It's a beast. If you think you can code it in like a few hours, good luck i'll probably pay you and probably also get a product for it so uh, it's not as easy as it, it, it is not as easy as it seems um it's a big piece of code uh, understanding it took me a good good amount of months and a lot of help from ash uh, who is also giving a talk um this monday monday yes monday or tuesday i can't remember but he's also giving a talk uh, on how the internals of the scheduler so definitely go and watch that um, but also configurations, permission model, deck parsing, all of the all of these things are to me um, a complex part of the code, which will require more time to understand, more time to champion those areas. So take more time on that. But this is how I would suggest you progress um, your Airflow journey. Do not try to do a bit of scheduler or CLI and try to uh, clamp everything in. Uh, now you know you have got a basic understanding of the area you are contributing so if you're working on gcp operators or gcp providers then google providers then you know this is how it works now you need to start writing code uh, it's an easier part um, and again when writing a code do not think that you are left on your own a lot of code not only in airflow but around different products and different projects you could take inspiration from the existing code. If you are, for example, if you are writing a hook, like I did, I, I was, I, I added a lot, lot more integrations to Google Cloud um, and 
it's how I st how I started. I started looking into how the current operators were like the BigQuery operator, how they were implemented. I took the code from there. I changed the code um, to for data proc operators, and because you you at least get the logic. Okay, you need to create the execute method. The execute method does this. If it fails, you need to retry and stuff like that. You you can check the existing code. You can also check the PRs that. Uh, added that code um, that added that hook or operator and the seeing the PR will help you understand what all the changes the previous contributor did. So you, sometimes when you are not sure about, okay, I added um, a new operator and I'm done, but no, uh, with providers, we, you need to update the documentation for it. Some of it is auto generated, but it is always good to add, okay, if you have connection, how to use that connection inside that operator, what are the methods, what what you could do with that. So for that, if you check the example or if someone already did that, that is useful. Uh, you can also take a good look at what kind of tests they added, um, what docs they added, then you'll, you'll understand the places where you need to do the same. Uh, also, we have this uh, section in contributing.rst called coding style and best practices. You should check it out. Uh, we don't. We have few few of the things that are important. Um, that and that mainly applies for uh, some some of the sections in code, but also applies to in general operator handling, the naming convention of the operator and stuff. So definitely recommend um, checking that out. And again. The main reason for this talk is so that you do not need to read each and everything in the contributing.rst. Uh, pick and choose what you need to do. Don't need to read 1400 lines of uh, code or docs right now itself. Once the code is done, you could do the same with test. Take inspiration from the existing code. Understand the directory structure. So the tests directory, all, all the tests in Airflow, apart from the unit test for a Helm chart lives inside this test directory. For tests for Helm chart lives in the same chart slash test, test directory. But for all the other ones, it, it, it is in the um, topmost folder. And if uh, a good example is if the code file is in Airflow providers, Google Cloud, operators, BigQuery, test for it will follow the same sort of directory flow, which is tests, but then providers, Google Cloud, operators, and test BigQuery. And similarly for docs, it would be at like docs, Apache Airflow providers, Google, and then operators, Cloud, and BigQuery. Uh, over the docs for the Airflow website, you, you if you check it right now, they have separated the docs for providers as well. So that's why um, there are different folders under docs, which is like Apache Airflow is just for code. Apache Airflow providers Google is just for Google providers. Same for Amazon, same for all the other providers. And docs, Apache Airflow, Helm chart, just for Helm chart. Docs, Apache Airflow, Docker image or container image is just for the Docker or the container image, that's it. So understand this flow. Once you understand what files are where and where you need to add the code, then it becomes uh, a bit easier. Before creating PR, this is important. Like la the last thing you want to do, and which I have many times again, is like I said, yeah, I don't want to fall into the hassle. I just want to come finish this quickly. So I'll create a PR, just let the CI run it. This is the last thing you want to do because when when you come after a day and see okay what's what happened to your PR there there would be a failing errors in your in in the test that you wrote uh, and which again wastes wastes your time I don't know how however hours you are spending on it uh, and it breaks the link so test everything locally test uh, that will also help not wasting times for the reviewers reviewers so test it locally first using breeze so. Starting breeze, uh, I already showed, which is very simple. Um, just run this breeze command and you'll be exact into the container. And then it, you can just use normal by py, test commands, which is like, if you want to run just a single test, spy test, the name of the file and the path for the file, you can add this dash k flag and the name of your test, uh, the name of the method that contains the test. This is a regex though. So if you have uh, another test that's that also starts from this, both the tests will run. Uh, and if you want to run all the tests inside a file, uh, then you could just 
PyTest is in the path of the file. That's it. Nothing, nothing more than that. Uh, and this will, and if you want to run it with different version, again, exec with like change the flag instead of Python 3.7, put Python 3.8 uh, and run with that. The CI will run with almost all combinations. So if you, for some cases, we, we have changed it so that we pick and choose the combination. Otherwise, these are big metrics. Uh, Postgres, MySQL, different version of Postgres, MySQL versus Py different versions of Python. So we do selective checks. Um, we just run some combination, but where the file touches the core of Airflow, we run the entire matrix. So you could also do it um, locally. You do not need to test it with all the combination, but at least do enough testing that you are confident about it. It's all about your confidence at this point. And run tests locally, uh, like, not not just the unit test, but you could also run integration tests. You could run Kubernetes tests for with the Helm chart. You could run system tests. Um, with integration tests, you could run with like what the components are used in Airflow, salary, Redis, and stuff. With system tests, you, it's useful for testing different providers like Google providers, Amazon providers. Uh, you could use the example decks that are already inside the Airflow repo. You could use those um, with an external system with the actual environments. And a lot of details are there uh, in the testing.rst if, if you would want to know more details about it. So code uh, tests and then docs. So not every change requires a docs change, um, but if you are changing even the doc strings uh, inside the method, you would rather run the uh, tests locally because we build the docs locally because we build the docs on the CI and we do two types of tests. One is just use Sphinx and see if the build went fine. Um, but also we make sure that there are no typos. Uh, so we do spelling checks and you could run both of them locally. Um, it's as simple as this like you could if you want to run um, build docs for Helm chart, then you could do breeze build docs package filter and Helm chart. The package filter is used for which uh, component you want to do like Helm chart, Docker image, uh, core Apache Airflow, just Apache Airflow, and uh, any specific provider. If you just want to create it for build the docs for uh, Amazon provider, you could just do uh, Apache Airflow providers Amazon. Uh, so it will just build a doc for that. And if you want to build it for everything, you don't need to put the package filter flag. But this is a, uh, just a small example uh, that I did. Uh, if you had any spelling mistake, it will show you which line had the mistake, uh, which spelling that you need to change. Some of the times the spelling would be correct, um, but because that word is not uh, identified in the dictionary that we use, it might not um, account for that. So in that case, you could add it to the word list that we have. It's under docs uh, repo. Uh, it, it's under the Airflow repo. If you go to docs folder, there's a spelling underscore word list dot txt. If you go to that, you can add that words, but only add if you are very sure that it's not a spelling mistake. Well, now, now, now that you are ready with your code, your tests and docs, it's time to commit and as I said, um, we have a lot of, lot of static code checks. Uh, and they are there for a good reason. We want to maintain the code quality for Airflow. Uh, make sure that this is easily readable and understandable. So we run a lot of pre-commit hooks. Uh, we have 90 odd pre-commit hooks, Flake 8, Black, MyPy. I'm not going to explain those tools, but uh, you could take a look in, on your own time. It's it's simple tool. Each of the tool is for a specific purpose. Um, we even have small, small pre-commit hooks like trimming, trailing white spaces, adding new lines, making sure that the licenses are uh, available on each files. That's one of the main rules or legal rules for being a project under Apache Software Foundation. So we need to make sure that the licenses are there. So we also have a pre-commit hook for that. And all these hooks, all these 90 odd hooks are documented in the static code checks.rst uh, if you're interested to check out. And these are run as soon as you do git add, as soon as you add your files to your git and you run git commit, all of these uh, static checks would start running. And here's an example. I, I missed a space or something in the Python code and I ran this and 
the black tool that we use that automatically formatted it for me. Um, so because it formatted for me, now I need to do git add and git commit again, and it will run it again just to make sure that there are no new errors. Uh, this is an important tool, which is like not only for Apache Airflow, but for contributing to any open source project, it is important that you write good commit messages. This uh, we also add this to add this um, add this link to the source to the PR template. So whenever if you are creating the PR for the first time, the bot will add this link. Um, definitely take a look at that. Uh, two important ones, at least for me, are limit the subject line. Don't need to write a hundred characters in the commit message subject. Uh, so limit it, limit that, and use the body to explain what the change is about, why the change is, and how how. And don't write it for anyone else, but write it for you, for yourself. There are plenty of occasions where I went back, even after a year or two years, just checking my commit because uh, a change didn't make sense to me. I went back and I was like, why did I add this change? And if I didn't add any proper commit message, I won't even know why that change existed. So write for yourself. Um, a good example is the commit um, below below this this one. You you could check that. It's it's the commit where we added the show, uh, support for Shitular HA. Finally, create the PR and wait for reviews. So create a PR from your fork to Apache Airflow repo. Make sure to add the PR description and title appropriately, similar to the commit messages. Like you can you can add commits to your branch after creating the PR too. Um, it's like if, if if don't feel like if you add one commit and create a PR, it's the it's the end. You can add more commits to your branch, and that would be reflected in the PR as well. Um, and some sometimes the reviewers um, might leave suggestions or ask for clarification on why you are adding this change or if it does not make sense or an alternative um, to it. So at that point, it is your responsibility to like talk to them. If if you don't agree with them, give your reasons. And once they are satisfied, they'll approve the PR and that can be merged. But as soon as you create a PR, it will start running all the unit tests and all the CI integration tests and whatnot. And that is also another place where you could ask uh, ask for any help that you need. Uh, so you, if for whatever reason the CI fails and you don't know why, you could ask um, on, on the PR itself by taking the reviewer. This is another important thing, like be patient. Have, so not everyone is paid to work on Airflow. Some of the con committers uh, work on their own time. Uh, they do community work. So it might take some time for reviews to um, go through. So be patient. Sometimes it just can take up to multiple days, a week, even even two weeks. So, but if you don't get reviews after even a couple of weeks, ping it on the development channel in the Airflow Slack workspace. Uh, just say uh, there's a good example over there. Just say I I am wondering if someone can review one of my PRs, and I'm sure someone will take a look at your PRs. And yeah. As I said, the test will start running as soon as you create PR. Fix any failing test, but there would be some cases where it's not your fault or not the fault of the code you wrote. It's just because there are certain instances where some of the tests might might fail. It might fail because some tests are just flaky. Uh, it might also happen that the main branch is also broken. Um, GitHub runner failure like we use uh, self-hosted runners so they might be failing and it can be like transient errors uh timeouts due to like no available slot um and also like failure of quarantine test we also have something called quarantine test so we add a test to quarantine when we know that it is not failing in isolation but it is failing with something else or it, it is just failing randomly um, so if you see that the quarantine quarantine section failed you can ignore it uh, it's fine and you do not need to worry about it but check before you come to a judgment check the failure and see if it's related to your code then make sure um, that uh, you you fix it 
uh, Fanon who will merge your PR. Once the PR is there, it needs at least one approved vote from a current committer. Um, and they, they need to approve the PR. Once a PR is approved, they can merge it. If your PR is approved and hasn't been merged, again, go through the same channels, ask, uh, or you can also tag the reviewer saying, uh, can you please take a look at it once or let me know if I need to do anything else. Do not hesitate in asking questions again. It's, it's for the community, by the community. Ask as many questions as you want. Just be respectful that replies can take time and just make sure you are polite. Talking about communication channels, uh, let me tell you how many communication channels we have. The top three or the main ones are the mailing list. This, that is the official source. Like there are two lists, dev at uh, airflow.apache.org. That is the official source for any decisions, any discussions that we do, any announcements. Like there is a motto in Apache Software Foundation or unwritten rule, or it might be one written rule that if it did not happen on the dev, dev list, um, it didn't happen at all. So dev list is a single place if you, if you are interested in Airflow, it's a single place for you to subscribe to, even um, if you want to chime in on any of the discussions. If you have any opinions or thoughts, you could ask there. Uh, you could even say that I'm thinking of this. Uh, I'll talk about Airflow improvement proposal in just a, a bit, but you, if you have proposals about that, you could discuss that on the mailing list and you can subscribe to it by just sending an email to dev or dash subscribe at airflow.apache.org. Similarly, we have user list. Uh, it is similar to Slack workspace and GitHub discussion. So it's up to you. It's your choice, but I would probably recommend uh, using Slack or GitHub discussions because uh, that way it's more quick um, rather than user list, but it's completely up to you. These are all the channels that we have. And now you have created your PRs. Now you would like to know that how can I become a committer? Uh, so. There are some guidelines that we have. Before that though, let me explain the rules. If, if you are very new to the project or if you have not been to the Apache Software Foundation, um, then you should know that there are contributors, there are committers and there are PMC members. Contributors are anyone who contributes code. Like I was a contributor as soon as I created that first PR. Committers on the other hand are the people that have right access to the project repo. Like they are the only people who can merge PRs, who can push something to the repo, to the branch in that repo. PMC members are the people who are responsible for governing the project, like binding votes on releases. Whenever we create a new vote, um, we, whenever we create a new vote that, uh, whenever we create a new release that, it undergoes voting. Um, some of it is from committers, even like the contributors are welcome from the community, uh, but only votes from PMC members are pending. And PMC members need to make sure that the vulnerability reports are taken care of, um, the code licenses are in place, the branding and trademarking for the project is complied with and, and, and that stuff. So now the guidelines for becoming a committer. Um, you can also become a committer without adding a single piece of code. We all, all we already have those uh, committers and they are an integral part of the community. I'll, I'll explain both in, in a bit now. Uh, like for both though, we require some prerequisites, which is like you need to consistently contribute over the last few months. Then that contribution can be either code contribution or community contributions. And the visibility is important. Like you need to be visible on the mailing list, Slack like channels or GitHub discussions, at least one place of those um, and contribute to the overall health of the project and understand the contributors guideline. So for code contributions, uh, you need to make sure that the whatever commit messages that you write are of high quality. You taste the release candidates that are out there. Uh, whenever a new Airflow uh, version is out for what you should test it. Uh, you have proposed and led like the Airflow improvement proposals, your champion, like one of the areas in the code base, like Airflow code, Docker image and chat. And you have made a significant improvement or added an integration that is imp uh, important to the uh, Airflow ecosystem. 
and last one um uh, community contributions which is like if you want to be a community contributor you need to help run F Airflow Summit, um, Airflow meetup groups, uh, talk about Airflow, uh, writing blogs, uh, lead change. It's not about just so everything outside of Airflow, but like changing documentation, um, even process wise, uh, you could say, okay, we want to triage um, all the GitHub issues that are being created by users. So that and if you are if you are just reporting bugs as well, make sure that you detail you write them in a detailed steps. Like the reproduction steps are important. So if you follow that, you can be also a, con a community contributor. Last but not the least, the Airflow improvement proposal. Um, it's you can create an Airflow improvement proposal. Anyone can create it, create it, and it's a piece of document where we say that okay, we have thought about a major change in airflow and that includes some architectural change. And the whole aim is that we, as a community, discuss those changes on the mailing list. So discussion starts with the mailing list. You can create a draft on the conference page that is linked over there. Voting happens on the mailing list. And once it's accepted, once the vote passes, in this case, like all both PMC members and committers have a binding vote. So if the vote passes, you could start the work. And once all the PRs related to APs are merged, Basically, you are completed. Oops, sorry, sorry. And that's it. Sorry, it was a long talk, but I, I knew that this is, I want to cover this. This was important. So hope, hope you all enjoyed.